Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. I'm sorry that it isn't Sunday. I've missed Sunday by quite some way. Um, so my plan had been that on Sunday I would make a video about how the first half of the blacking had gone and then on next week, this Sunday, I would have a video about how the second half had gone. Um, I didn't really correctly estimate the amount of effort would be needed for doing DIY blacking. I also incorrectly estimated how dirty I would be and how the inside of the boat would also be disgusting because we're out of the water and while we're painting the outside of the boat we can't use the sinkholes because obviously then water would be on the blacking which we've just painted. I'm really sorry, I'm kind of suffering with allergies a little bit, I think to blacking which is on my hands. So you get a midweek extravaganza of both videos slammed together into an intense recount of the blacking of the bottom of our beautiful boat. So here she is. Um, this is a very strange thing to see, her bottom. Let me get my handy notebook and pencil because I'm gonna struggle with the timeline if I don't have it written down in front of me as it's been a lot of maths to figure out what's being done on what day, what we've already done and all that kind of thing. And also I got really anxious throughout the whole process that things weren't going to be timed correctly, that the weather would be against us and all that kind of thing. And I'm a bit of a prepper, so that kind of worked in our advantage. So Friday we were supposed to be out of the water at sort of 11, 12 o'clock because another boat was being surveyed that boat didn't do too well in the survey it took much longer than they'd expected we didn't get out until about two o'clock and then after that a lovely chap called Charles came and he jet sprayed all of the loose paint and the uh, weeds and all the little shells that were sticking onto the boat off um, definitely well worth doing that and then we spent the rest of the day with scrapers scraping off any loose paint and um, then we did a rust treatment around all the places we could see rust. Um, we were very happy to see that she doesn't have any pitting. Um, she's pretty much in the same condition as when we first bought her, which is good. She's a, a very smooth boat for her age. And I think it just shows that if you do black regularly, that it actually does make a huge difference. You can have a boat that's five years old, that's been rusted to pieces because it's never been blacked. And equally, you can have a bo boat that's, much much older like ours which uh, our boat I think is from 95 and she's been really well looked after blacked every two years and she's got very little pitting really nothing that would come up in a survey I don't think um so yeah anyway off on the first day which was a Friday um when we did the de-rusting almost immediately it started to rain so it was getting dark we decided to go to bed get up really early and get on with it in the morning um so as i say i got really anxious during the whole process um i really didn't sleep very well so on the saturday morning i realized at about 4 30 in the morning it was light and i wasn't asleep and i wasn't going to sleep so i may as well get up and get to work Anyway, so I got up and I started doing all the masking tape over the edges of the boat and over the um, anodes and over the sinkholes. And then I completely redid the rust treatment. I went maybe a little overboard going around every single point of the boat, looking really closely to find any little bits that could be rust and treating them. Probably treated a lot of things that weren't rust as well in the process. Um, we then, I woke up my partner at about six we had some breakfast and then we painted the boat with its primer we had to wait three hours for the primer to be dry enough for us to paint on top of it and then it started raining again so we took 
uh, like plastic dust sheet that you would use like on the floor to protect your carpet if you were painting. Um, and we duct taped that to the side of the boat and essentially attained, uh, created a large tent around the boat. And so that day we managed to paint this one side, we're gonna call that side one um, for the most part and the complete underneath the, the boat. But because we had pulled side one out, uh, the plastic on the other side was so tight that we couldn't physically get underneath to paint the second side. So we left that for that day. Um, Sunday morning, uh, we got up early because we started painting side one at about midday. So because we wanted to start painting that one midday on Saturday, the next day, because you need to leave about 24 hours for the paint to cure in between coats, we wanted to get up so we could start painting side two um, on Sunday um, at about nine so that we could paint side one at 12 o'clock again because the forecast for rain was supposed to come at about two o'clock. And on Saturday, it had come two hours early so we were really interested in getting our painting done as soon as humanly possible. Um, so we had done a little bit of research about the drying times and with the paint manufacturers that we've used, it's 24 hours if it's five degrees. So at the moment it's about 20 degrees. So for on their thing, it said if it's 25 degrees, you can paint every eight hours. We didn't really want to risk it to do it that little so we've left it as late as we could, but in occasions we've done it a little bit earlier than 24 hours. So anyway, Sunday comes, we paint the first side at 9 a.m., the second side at 12. Um, it does rain on cue at about two o'clock for a little bit, but not that much. On Sunday, we didn't paint the bottom again because we were exhausted and we both fell asleep at about three o'clock in the afternoon. Monday comes along and we got up again, painted both sides about the same timings and then we also painted the bottom again. Um, it's really not very nice underneath. Um, I know on, I think it was Life in a Nutshell, they had it on much higher, uh, on a much higher mount. So basically with the way that the boat's coming out of the water for this one, it's basically pulled out on like tracks on a, on, with a tractor with night life in a nutshell I think they were craned out so they could crane the boat up higher so they could paint underneath we didn't have that luxury so we had about two feet within which we would crawl underneath to paint um, which was not terribly pleasant um, my partner and I realized very quickly that he was most happy doing the very detailed bits of work and I was most happy doing the large areas so I mostly did like the large side blocks and then he would go through and do like the bottom edge, the top edge, um, the bits around the, the front and the back of the boat. And the same with the underneath. I did the main drags and then he would do the bits that were right up near where the boat is obviously sat on some bits of wood. Um, not everybody paints the bottom. And obviously there is a slice in the middle where we haven't been able to paint the bottom. Um, but since we were really doing that as an extra added bonus, like honestly not that much air gets to that part of the boat anyway I'm not too worried about it but we just figured since we've got her out the water we might as well do as much as we possibly can so then we get to Tuesday which is today the day that I am recording this this morning we got up again 9 a.m we painted side two but we already had done three layers on side one so we didn't need to do one of those we painted the water uh, the water line though on side one and then we repainted the whole bottom again today. Tomorrow is the very last thing. We're going to paint a little bit on the waterline of side two at like 9 a.m. Because we go back into the water on Friday at 9. And you have to have 48 hours to cure at the end of the blacking. So to give the 48 hours, we need to have finished all painting by 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So that's the thing, tomorrow we're gonna get up like eight o'clock, do that one little line around the waterline and she'll be completely done. We're really <laughs> pleased that we've managed to get this time tabled quite right. Um, it's really hard, like it's hard work. It's really fun though and quite, like it's not bad. If the weather's good, it's really nice. The really horrible stuff was when it was raining. 
like it was just wet and horrible for the first day or so but I would say I really enjoyed doing it overall it was a really nice project to do with my partner blacking itself we used about six cans and it, ho it is horrible stuff like it really sticks to you I mean I'm sure you can see I've got some on my face I've got like it's in the crinkles of my skin but I've managed to get most of it off of my hands I was wearing latex gloves to start with but we only bought 20 and that apparently wasn't enough for all the painting that we did. I'd say it cost maybe just over half as much as it would have if we paid somebody else to do it. And obviously it's been like something now we know if anything goes wrong, we've only got ourselves to blame. So that's good. I mean, you can see there's like a line at the waterline. That's lumps of old paint from the previous time she's been blacked. So where you can see bumps below the walk line, same thing, it's just paint that's stuck to the boat. Like, so basically the bare metal is below, where, where the water line is below that line, that's where the bare metal is. So it's really interesting to kind of see that and see, well, clearly that's how everybody paints their boat because this boat, every time she's been out, the top layer has not been eroded away because it hasn't been below the water. So there's a really thick layer of blacking that's maybe as old as the boat at the top. And then at the bottom, there's obviously no blacking at all, pretty much, um, which I think is super interesting. Um, and yeah, I think she looks much prettier. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to get rid of some of the stuff on the roof and make her look like a proper nice boat again. Um, yeah, we're planning a really big adventure next to sort of celebrate her being newly blacked and I plan on taking you all obviously along. I've got some other little exciting things up my sleeve and if any of you are going to summer in the city I am planning to be there on Friday. I'm also thinking of doing a live show so let me know in the description below if you would like to watch it sort of what days and times would be good for you if you can put like what your time zone is that'd be very helpful. Um, bear in mind, of course, we are DIY people. We've looked things up, we've researched, we may not have done everything right. If you're going to uh, black your own boat's bottom, do your own research because I'm no professional and I shouldn't be giving you advice, really. Um, but yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this adventure into the world below the waterline of our boat. If you would like to, you can follow me on Facebook, as I say. Uh, by searching this narrowboat adventure you could support me on patreon which is a basically accredited to new equipment i've got a couple of little bits that i'd still like to get like maybe a 360 video uh camera i'm thinking of, well i'm sort of looking into borrowing one at some point in the next month so maybe you'll see a 360 cruising vlog here then and if you'd like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure please click subscribe below and join us again We've got some fantastic adventures coming up. I've got some wonderful things up my sleeve, so just you wait. And uh, let's see where this adventure leads us. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!